Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis, a video series where we talk a lot about complex contour integrals. And in today's part 34, we will finally talk about the famous residue theorem. However, as always, before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. I'm really glad for all the support you give me and as a bonus, I offer you a PDF version and a quiz for this video. Okay, then let's start talking about the residue theorem. So as always, we have here an open domain in the complex plane and we call it D. Moreover, we consider a holomorphic function defined on D. And now we simply find some isolated singularities for our function f. Okay, and here you already know, for each singularity we have a well-defined residue. In order to define this, we simply choose a small circle around the singularity. So if we call the singularity z0, we only have to assume that we choose epsilon small enough such that the whole epsilon ball without the singularity lies in our domain d. Indeed, this is the only thing we need and then we can define the residue of f at the isolated singularity z0. On the other hand, you see, if we already know the residue, we can use it to calculate a closed curve integral. And indeed, this is exactly what the residue theorem is about. Essentially, the only thing we have to do is to bring the factor 2 pi i to the other side. Moreover, you also know by our discussion of the keyhole contour that it does not matter which circle we choose here as long as there is only z0 inside as the only isolated singularity. Therefore, immediately we can calculate every closed curve integral along a circle C. So in the picture above, this could be such a circle here. Also, you see, the middle point does not have to be Z0. However, still it's very important that Z0 is the only singularity of F inside this disk. Okay, but with this knowledge now, we can say even something about more contour integrals. Indeed, that's the reason we discussed this keyhole contour in part 26 in all detail. Because with the proof there, where we have used Cauchy's integral theorem, we can also consider different curves inside the circle here. In other words, we immediately get the result that we can calculate the closed curve integral along this curve gamma. In fact, the only thing that can change now from the circle is how many times we go around the singularity with the curve gamma. However, for this we also already have a notion, it's called the winding number. In other words, this factor here with the residue gets multiplied by the winding number of gamma around z0. So you see, we already have a nice formula for calculating a closed curve integrals for some curves gamma. And now the only question is, can we generalize this fact when the curve gamma surrounds more singularities? And indeed, this is exactly the claim for the residue theorem. It simply tells us that the closed curve integral is completely determined by the isolated singularities of the function f. So you see, this is a very nice fact we can use a lot and therefore I want to formulate it immediately in the general version. However, for the proof soon, we will simplify this a little bit. Okay, but first let's write down the necessary assumptions we need here. First of all, D is again an open domain in C. And there please don't forget, it means it's connected. And moreover, of course, as before, we take a holomorphic function f defined on D. And also again, this function now should have finitely many singularities and we call them z1, z2 and so on. So you can imagine this like in the picture before, where we now enumerate all the isolated singularities. Okay, and then the only thing missing is of course a closed curve we call gamma. And obviously the range of gamma should lie in D. However, now it's very important that with the curve gamma, we don't surround any other non-isolated singularities of f. So for example, this means that this here on the left should not happen. So you already know, in other words, this means that the interior of the curve gamma should lie completely inside D 
with the exception of the isolated singularities. So we write interior of gamma union isolated singularities is a subset of D. Of course, it's also possible to satisfy this condition by saying something about the open domain D first. For example, if D is an open disk with the exception of the isolated singularities, this condition here is obviously for all curves gamma fulfilled. Okay, and now the statement of the residue theorem is simply the generalization of this statement from above. So this means we just have to sum over all isolated singularities. So more precisely, this closed contour integral here is given by the sum where j goes from 1 to n. And then we have the factor 2 pi i times the winding number around zj times the residue at zj. So in other words, we simply sum up all the residues weighted with the winding numbers. So you see, the residue theorem tells us that if we know the residues of the function, we can calculate a closed contour integral. So it's a very powerful result and the generalization of Cauchy's theorem. And indeed, in order to prove this statement here, we can use Cauchy's theorem. And as promised, let's keep the proof simple. So therefore, let's assume that our open domain D is an open disk in C. Or more concretely, the open disk should be called D tilde. Because then our D is given by D tilde without the singularities. So you see, we have a very concrete domain here. So for example, it could look like this, and there we have our singularities inside. And now a simple curve gamma could look like this. Please note there, the condition that the interior is completely in D tilde here is always fulfilled. Okay, now for the proof, let's make the curve gamma here a little bit bigger. Okay, and then you should see the idea. For each singularity, we can simply add a keyhole contour. And then we can simply argue as for the single keyhole contour that Cauchy's theorem is applicable here. So we have a closed curve in the correct domain, so Cauchy's theorem tells us the contour integral is zero. So you see, the original integral can be calculated by three integrals as circles around the singularities. So you see, for some special domains and some special curves, the proof of the residue theorem is not hard at all. So maybe that's good enough for the proof now. The important thing is that first you remember this important formula here. So the residue theorem tells you you need this to calculate a contour integral. And later we will see with such a contour integral we are also able to calculate real integrals. And indeed this is something we can discuss in the next video. So I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.